सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर टेन वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट पेज नंबर वन फिफ्टी वन टेन पॉइंट वन इंट्रोडक्शन वी ऑल ऑब्जर्व हाउ वेस्ट इज जनरेटेड इन आर होम्स एंड नेबरहुड एंड हाउ इट इज डिस्पोज ऑफ The disposal of waste has been done in a haphazard manner since ages be it in villages towns or cities but today waste generation and disposal has become a matter of concern owing to the enormous increase in population the changes in our lifestyles and consumption patterns huge expansion of industries transport communication and commercial infrastructures and unrestrained use of modern technology In fact, waste management has emerged as a serious challenge having major implications not only for human health and social life but also for the environment. It is in this context that this chapter deals with different dimensions of waste management. The focus in this chapter is on solid waste disposal. 10.2 Solid waste. What do we mean by solid waste? almost everything that we use degenerates and loses its utility over a period of time many things become unusable after we use them only once we then throw them away everything that we discard after it loses its usability is known as solid waste or garbage there are different sources from where solid waste or garbage is generated every day from individual households domestic waste and from industries and commercial establishments however all such wastes are not uniform in nature broadly speaking solid wastes can be divided into two distinct categories biodegradable and non biodegradable waste we have an activity for you activity 10.1 bring some waste materials from home this can be kitchen waste for example vegetable peels used tea leaves some food leftovers and discarded articles of use such as empty jars of plastic or and glass used paper torn cloth etc bury those items in the social garden or in a bucket or flower pot and cover them with sufficient soil leave the items buried for about 3 weeks after which take those items out for review you will find that certain materials have changed their form that is they have decayed decomposed or are in the process of decomposition on the other hand some other materials are almost in the same form those materials that have decayed or decomposed are biodegradable materials whereas those in which there was no change are non biodegradable materials think about the reasons of this variation and write page 152 page number 152 at the top of the page we have a box box number 10.1 it reads in your history textbook you must have studied how archaeologists record the lives of ancient societies through the material remains left behind by them these materials give us a glimpse of how people lived what they ate and other aspects of their lives why do you think these materials have still retained their form 10.2.1 biodegradable and non biodegradable waste let us understand how biodegradable wastes are different from non biodegradable wastes by conducting the following activity we define biodegradable materials as those substances made of organic matter such as plant and animal matter that can be easily broken down by nature for example vegetable peels and other kitchen waste vegetables fruits tea leaves paper wood etc non biodegradable materials are those materials which cannot be broken down easily and retain their form for a long period of time for example metals tin glass plastics etc 10.3 solid waste disposal the garbage that we generate every day has not only increased in volume phenomenally but 
has also changed its composition due to changes in our lifestyles and consumption patterns. For instance, there is now an increasing use of non-biodegradable materials such as plastics, metals and glass, specifically in urban areas. Technological advancement has further brought in an increasing use of electronic items and gadgets. These are useful for us, but when discarded, known as e-waste, they can be harmful to the environment and human health, particularly for the workers associated with this occupation. In addition, we seem to have lost our aesthetic and civic sense and carelessly litter garbage around on the roads, in the marketplace, in open drains, ponds, rivers, seas and so on. In fact, we keep throwing a lot of garbage every day. Have you ever thought, what will happen if the garbage is not removed from our homes and surroundings? Where does this garbage ultimately go and what is done with it? If proper measures for disposal and sanitation are not followed, how will garbage affect our environment and health? Box 10.2 It reads, As a reference, you can look into the science textbook class 7 for the decomposition period of both biodegradable and non-biodegradable materials. Moving on with the chapter, 10.3.1 Consequences of Solid Waste Disposal In the cities and towns, collection of garbage is the responsibility of the respective municipalities. The garbage then goes through a process of segregation, treatment and final disposal in the landfills. This process of segregation in our country is still done manually by rack pickers. Please see figure 10.1. In this process, materials that can be recycled are separated, while toxic wastes are sorted out and kept separately. This process of segregation ensures that the amount of solid waste, which is ultimately disposed of in the landfills, is reduced substantially. Page number 153. At the top of the page, we have a figure, figure 10.1. A rack picker segregating materials from garbage dump. We can see a garbage dumping ground. There is a truck which is full of garbage and is about to dump that at the site. We can see a rack picker picking some stuff from this garbage dump. We can also see a dog trying to find something to eat. Now, continuing with the chapter. However, with the enormous volume of waste that is being generated nowadays, the concerned authorities are finding it difficult to deal with this problem. Most often, we find that all sorts of solid wastes are dumped together in the landfills, which in many places have already overreached its accumulation level. Moreover, groundwater in the immediate vicinity of such landfill sites is prone to contamination through continuous contact with the deposited waste. Details of the structure of landfills have already been given in the science textbook of class 6. In most of the rural areas, people have to deal with the disposal of household wastes themselves. A common method is the burning of solid wastes. This may be a convenient method, but is not conducive either to the environment or to our health, as it causes air pollution. Many of the villages do practice composting, which is the desirable method. 10.3.2 Effects of undisposed or unattended garbage Open and unattended garbage is a common sight in the market, streets or in the vicinity of our homes. Page number 154 Most often, it emits such a foul smell that we have to cover our noses with a cloth. Have you ever stopped to think how unattended garbage can affect our health and our environment? If you observe carefully, you will notice that when garbage is allowed to collect in the open for a long time, it attracts flies, cockroaches and other insects. It also attracts rats and stray dogs. In fact, moist or fermenting garbage, particularly when organic waste such as kitchen waste is thrown, becomes a perfect breeding place for flies. 
When we eat the food which has been contaminated by these flies, we are likely to fall ill. Water and foodborne diseases such as dysentery, cholera, and gastroenteritis are some of the diseases that can be transmitted by flies. Moreover, since accumulated garbage emits foul smell, it also causes air pollution. Figure 10.2 Discarded plastic bottles in an open drain. In this figure, we can see an open drain which is full of sewage. We can also see solid wastes like plastic bottles and other materials swimming in this open drain. Now we have a table for you. Table 10.1 Types of Waste. This table has three columns. The first one is toxic waste, then there is e-waste, and then finally hospital waste or soiled waste. Toxic waste. Toxic waste causes serious problem to our health and to the environment. Examples, dried paint, old bulbs, old batteries. E-waste. E-waste consists of dismantled parts of computers, electronic appliances, mobile phones, TV, floppy disks, pen drives. In India, e-wastes are dumped into unsafe and unauthorized dumping yards where they are dismantled manually and unscientifically, causing great environmental and health risks as they contain dangerous contaminants. Hospital Waste or Soiled Waste This consists of various components containing infected human tissues or body fluids and are called biohazardous. The needles, surgical knives and other surgical instruments called sharps have to be disposed of carefully, but many a time we find that this does not happen. Being pricked with infected needles can transmit diseases like HIV, Hepatitis B and C. Indiscriminate use and disposal of plastic can clog the drains. Figure 10.2 Moreover, during the rainy season, the waste may flow along with the rain water to nearby rivers and other surface water bodies, thereby polluting them and affecting aquatic life. When we drink the polluted and untreated water, we succumb to waterborne diseases. Carelessly disposed of hospital waste and e-waste may also pose health problems. This is also called hazardous waste. Page 155 Page number 155 now we have an activity for you. Activity number 10.2 You may collect information on the following points. What method of garbage disposal is practiced in your community? Who collects the garbage from your home? Do you ever lift the garbage at the community site? How far is this site from your home? Have you ever observed flies, mosquitoes, insects and stray animals around the garbage disposal site? What are the methods utilized by the community for final disposal of garbage? On the basis of the information collected, answer the following questions. Do you think the method of garbage disposal in your community is appropriate? If yes, explain how. If not, what would you suggest to ensure sanitary conditions for garbage disposal from your community? 10.4 Waste Management and segregation. You must have heard the slogan Reuse, Recycle, Reduce and Refuse. This slogan is associated with the practice of waste segregation and management. Waste segregation and management is a process by which we categorize waste products and garbage on the basis of what we can reduce, reuse and recycle. We have discussed that the volume of solid waste that is generated by us has reached such an alarming proportion that government alone cannot deal with it. We also have to be aware of the environmental and health hazards associated with it. As it is a problem that has emanated from us, we must make efforts to resolve it. By practicing waste segregation and management, we can reduce the volume of solid waste. Activity 10.3 Make a record of all the items that were disposed of from your home last week. Make a rough estimate of each item of solid waste. 
This estimate can be presented in the table 10.2. Quantity of waste generated at home in a month. Based on your estimates, give some suggestions on how you can reduce the volume of kitchen waste to almost zero. Are there any items in your waste which can be reused or recycled? Make a list of these items. Make a list of items that cannot be reused or recycled. If there are hazardous wastes in these items, how will you dispose them of? You may compare your observations and suggestions with your classmates. Page number 156 Figure 10.3 Children playing with waste material In this figure, we have an open dump yard. We can see two kids playing there. They are playing with waste materials which can be hazardous for their health. We can also see a woman with a small child in her arms looking at those two kids. Now, continuing with the chapter. Through this activity, you will be surprised to find that many of the items that have been discarded by you still have utility. On the other hand, there are certain wastes such as wet waste, kitchen waste, which can be reduced to almost zero waste. Let us now discuss how we can reduce the volume of solid waste and garbage by practicing waste management and segregation through the principles of reuse, recycle, reduce and refuse. Table 10.2 In this table, we have two columns. The first one says items and the second one is quantity, percentage of total home waste. Now, the first item is kitchen waste. Quantity in percent of the total home waste, 50. Now, the next item is glass, then paper, then plastics, old cloth, then metals, old medicines and others. Now, you have to fill up quantity in percentage of the total home waste for these items. Page number 157 10.4.1 Practicing Waste Management and Segregation Number 1. Segregation at Source The first and most important principle for waste management is segregation at source. Segregation of garbage at source should be practiced at home, at school, office and markets. Garbage can be disposed of in separate bins. Figure 10.4 Blue bins may be used for non-biodegradable and green bins for biodegradable waste. At home, you may segregate waste in the following categories. A. Wet waste B. Dry waste C. Hazardous waste Figure 10.4 Blue and green bins In this figure, we have two images. The first image is a garbage bin which is blue in color which is meant for non-biodegradable waste and the second one is green in color which is meant for biodegradable waste. In the cities, we find these bins in some places where people can dispose of biodegradable and non-biodegradable garbage separately. Where do you think we should dispose of hazardous waste? Should there be a separate bin for it? Why? Number 2. Reduce, reuse, recycle and refuse. We should segregate waste products with a view to reduce, reuse, recycle and refuse. In activity 10.3, you have seen that there are different types of waste that are generated in our homes. For most of us, kitchen wastes, fruit peels, vegetables, leftover food, tea leaves, forms a large percentage of the total waste at home. Composting is a common method to reduce the volume of kitchen waste to zero waste. It is also an effective way through which kitchen waste can be recycled back into nature. There are certain items in our garbage that can be reused. Reusing discarded items means that instead of dumping them and increasing the load of waste, we can reuse these items. Page number 158. Now, we will discuss some examples here. Items such as plastic containers and pickle bottles can be reused to store other things. We can reuse wrapping papers, cardboard boxes and chocolate boxes. We can give away old clothes to the needy. It is better to use cloth bags instead of plastic bags for shopping. Buy products which can be reused such as 
Rechargeable Batteries Box 10.3 How to prepare a compost pit Pits can be dug in the house compound. In case we don't have space at home, we can use flower pots at home or we can put them at the community sites collectively. Kitchen waste can be disposed of in the pits or flower pots or community sites and covered with soil every day. When the pit is filled, it can be completely covered with soil and closed for a period of approximately 5 to 6 months. After that period, the waste will decompose into brown mass called compost due to bacterial action and can be used as manure for plants. Now, continuing with the chapter, often you may have come across persons, the kabadiwalas, who visit our home and to whom we sell old newspapers, magazines, bottles, tins, etc. Maybe you have never thought where these products go and what happens to them. These products are utilized as raw materials for manufacturing other products. In other words, these products are recycled. This is actually an important effort as in this process, we not only reduce the load of garbage, but also conserve natural resources. Figure 10.5 Compost Pit Prepared by Bethany Society, Shillong, Meghalaya in this figure, we have two images which show a compost pit that has been prepared by Bethany Society, Shilong Meghale. Page number 159 Some of the common items that can be recycled are glass, metals, paper, plastics, cardboard, batteries, cans made of steel and aluminium, rubber, wooden furniture. While segregating wastes, you will find that there are also a large number of items that cannot be reused or recycled. In activity 10.3, you have made a list of these items. You must have also noticed that some of these items are non-biodegradable in nature. So, what we can do is to reduce unnecessary consumption and purchases. We may also refuse to accept items that are damaging to the environment and human health. Now we will discuss such examples. Look for products that do not have elaborate packing. Use things judiciously. Do not waste food. Refuse offer of plastic bags. Develop eco-friendly habits. You must have now understood the importance and necessity of practicing waste segregation and management. Each of us should develop awareness towards this issue. By practicing waste segregation and management, we will not only safeguard ourselves from numerous health hazards, but also save our environment from pollution. At the top of the page, on the right side, we have box. The box number is 10.4. Did you know, for every ton of paper that is recycled, about two trees are saved? Our newspapers are printed on recycled paper. Box 10.5 We should also cultivate the habit of practicing the four hours of waste management. That is, reuse, reduce, recycle and refuse in our day-to-day -day life. Now, time for some activity. Activity number 10.4 Visit a recycling unit along with your classmates and record the following observations. A. What are the items of solid waste that are brought to the recycling unit? B. Who brings these materials? C. What is the sanitary condition of the go-down where solid wastes to be recycled are kept? D. Are any safety measures adopted for the workers involved in the recycling unit? E. What are the products made from recycled material? Can you suggest any other products that could have been made? F. Is there any impact of the recycling process on the environment and to human health? Page number 160 Assessment Answer the following questions. Question number 1. Why is it necessary to segregate our garbage at source? Question number 2. 
list at least four environmental friendly practices that can help to reduce, reuse and recycle waste or garbage. Question number three. What are the health risks faced by rag pickers? Suggest two measures for their safety. Question number four. Toxic waste, hospital waste and soiled waste should be disposed of with great care. Explain why. Question number five. Mention some of the health hazards associated with open garbage dumps. Question number six. What is the difference between biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste? How does non-biodegradable material affect our environment? Question number seven. Suggest some ways of minimizing the use of plastics in our daily life. What are the health hazards associated with plastic? Question number eight. Which of these items cannot be recycled? A. Jars B. Bottles C. Bulbs D. Paper Question number 9. Composting is an appropriate method for dealing with A. Commercial waste B. Domestic waste C. Organic waste and D. Industrial waste Question number 10. Which of these is not a biodegradable waste? A. Vegetable peel B. Wool C. Fruits D. Tin You are just listening to this audiobook. Narrator Neeraj Yadav Technical Coordinator Bati Langlingdo Sound Recordist Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Ruchi Sharma Directed and Produced by Vimalesh Chaudhary this audiobook is presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.